series, Luke chapter 10, if you could go down there with me. What I would say to you about Luke chapter 10 is that take your Bibles after this and read the whole thing. I'm going to jump over a few, you know, just to spare us time. You probably would want to get the good, the big picture uh, on your own. It's, a, it's an easy read. So, um, <clears throat> Luke chapter 10. Verse 1 and 2, Jesus talks, uh, decides to, to, to send his disciples and give them an assignment. So he says, the Lord, that the Lord now chose 72 other disciples and sent them ahead in pairs to all the towns and places that he planned to visit. Uh, this was the instruction he gave them. He says, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who, will, who is in charge of the harvest and ask him to send more workers into the field. So just a, a little background. Jesus has been working with 12 disciples that we know of. But you know a lot of people, uh, once they discovered who Jesus was, they committed their lives to him. And they just they devoted their lives to following him. They are disciples. If you devoted your life to following Jesus, that's why you're, you're a disciple of Jesus. So, and it, but but, but uh, what they did at this po- up until this point, they just were amazed, constantly amazed at what Jesus was doing. Jesus put out a show that was better than any show in the world. Well, he didn't do it at a show. I'm just using today's world. When he comes in and speaks, everybody's like, wow. How does he know stuff like that? He was always impressive. Everything he says, paradigm shift. He'll like, yeah, you've always been told this, but I'm saying this. You've always, you know, and he just blew their minds. You know, for someone that's just wanting to, to learn and study, I mean, he was the best teacher to be around. And it didn't stop there. People came who were sick. They followed him around. Uh, they knew if I could get to Jesus where he's speaking, you know, if, I ha- if I'm sick, I know I could get my healing. It doesn't matter. And you read stories after stories where people would go at great lengths trying to find where Jesus was. And wherever he went and he spoke, healing just followed. It was part of what he did. You know, people that had been lamed since they were born. He will, he, will, he will give them an ability to walk. Blind eyes will be opened. People who are deaf ears, incurable diseases will be cured because sometimes he won't even have to lay hands on you. He'll just speak. Yes. One of the most impressive stories is a guy that came to Jesus and approached him and says, you know, teacher, I have a, a servant. I have a, a worker of mine. He's my key guy. He's my right-hand guy. He is sick. I, I, I couldn't even bring him here because he's so sick. And he needs a touch from you. And, I, and he says, you know, um, uh, Jesus says, okay, I'll, I'll come to your house and help you out. And the guy says, hey, wait a minute. You don't even have to come. I know. I, I know how this works. I'm a man with authority and understand the chain of command and how it works. I know all you have to do is just speak your word. And my servant will be here. And Jesus was so impressed by his faith, he looked back, stopped everything he was doing. And he says to this guy, hey, I guess to everybody. So you see this guy right here? He's got it. He understands. He's got it. I haven't seen this kind of faith yet. But this is what I'm looking for. To believe in my word. And God and, and his servant will be healed without even Jesus coming there. But what, what, what Jesus was doing, he was setting up his people. He was setting up his, his disciples to understand the principles of what Jesus called the kingdom of God. See, if you read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you realize that Jesus had a consistent message. He spoke about the kingdom. He spoke about the kingdom of God. His message was one thing. Help me out. What is it? The kingdom of God. He'll give an illustration and says, this is what the kingdom of God is like. He'll teach something and says, if you want to be a part of the kingdom, be like this. Oh, let me tell you about the kingdom. And he will give parables, stories, uh, metaphors that would connect just to help us a little bit connect with the kingdom and to get a little understanding of the kingdom of God. And that was his message. At this point, these guys have been following him and, 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 uh, and um, he's telling them, he's trying to say, now show him that now that you're in the kingdom, I'm going to empower you with the same abilities that I have, and you're going to be representatives of the kingdom everywhere. Did this do my mic act like that last time too? <clears throat> I'm, you're going to be representatives of the kingdom, and I don't want you to be, to be afraid. And this, 
he sent them. So let's keep on reading. They go out and the, and the Lord gave him some instruction and says, hey, this is what to expect. He says, don't take it too personally when they go in and you try to talk to them and they boo you off and they tell you don't. He said, don't worry about stuff. So if they reject you, they're not really rejecting you. Don't take, it, don't take it too personally. They're rejecting me. And when they reject me, they reject God who sent me. So in other words, it says, take all your insecurities away. Don't take it too hard. I tried to talk to my family about the Lord, and they thought I was going crazy. It says, relax. Don't get all upset about that. You do what you're supposed to do. So he's, uh, but then he, he, he sends them. And, and, and I'm going to jump down a few verses, go down to, I think, 16, if you're following along. And so this is after they've gone out, 72, and they will go in pairs, and they had some ministry. They've preached, they've prayed for people, they've uh, seen pe- miracles happen. So they come back to give the report, verse 16. He says, then he said to the disciples, anyone who accepts your message is also accepting me. And anyone who rejects your message is rejecting me. And anyone who rejects me is rejecting God who sent me. When the 72 disciples returned and joyfully, they joyfully reported to him. They said, Lord, can't, you can't believe this. I'm adding up. I'm sure it wasn't just like the way the writer wrote it. I'm sure there was a lot more emotion, a lot more expression in this. You gotta, you gotta draw in between the lines, right, to get the pictures. God, Lord, you cannot believe this. This was so cool, we couldn't believe it ourselves. Even the demons obeyed us whenever we used your name. Oh boy, that song we were singing, it was just chilling to me. How powerful, how wonderful, how awesome, how marvelous the name of the Lord is. He says of the, of the Bible that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are, and are safe. He says, in my name you shall do this. Let's call that name. Let's live by that name. Let's declare that name because it's, it's been given to us. So God, they had gone in and, 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 and Jesus put them on some kind of action and some kind of mission to help them kind of like, okay, this is what I've been telling you. This is what I want your new life to be like. And they were blown away that not only Jesus could do such things, that they, through the empowerment, and that's the message, that Jesus, of Jesus' authority, they were able to get stuff. What does it mean to use your name? To use the name? Well, it's to, to exercise that authority. I love it. As a parent, it's just so funny. All the time when you watch the kids. Uh, to me, it's fun when I observe it. Uh, <clears throat> you tell the kids, oh, well, God called your brothers and sisters. Tell them to come inside. Time, time for dinner. And you watch that one that just comes in and tells their brothers and sisters, time to go inside. <laughs> Everybody goes on with their friends and they do what they're doing. Well, I was like, who, who do you think you are? And a smart kid will go, hey, Mom said, time to go inside. And that's a different response. So dad said, they exercise kingdom authority. All right. These guys go out and say, wow, Jesus, when we used your name, even the demons obeyed us. When we used your name, things were happening for us. Well, we couldn't do it in our own authority, but because we are connected to you and we can use the authority of your name, we can make declarations that mean something. And then Jesus goes and says to them, yes, I, I, I told you, I, 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 yes, he told them, I saw Satan fall down from heaven like lightning and I'm given, I've given you authority to trample over snakes and scorpions and to overcome every power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. But don't rejoice because the evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. Another translation says rejoice because your name is written in heaven. You know, it says that whosoever's name is written. When we come to, it's not found, not written in the book of life. Shall be cast into the lake of fire. It says, okay, let's get... I said, all that is cool, and I want you to show you that I'm going to do some cool things in your life. How many has ever seen God do something? You're like, man, if it wasn't for God, I would have been toast. 
if it wasn't for God, I, I didn't pull it off. Everybody was like, oh, that was really cool. But it's like, nah, if it wasn't for God's grace, yes, yes, yes. I wouldn't have had the ability, the talent, the capability to do. People might say, hey, man, you're so good. But it's like, no, it's God's grace. I know there's an opportunity that's been given to me that not everybody has. And so it keeps you having a humble posture no matter how good you do. Because he's like, okay, I thank God. But you know, if his grace was not on my life, I could have gone a completely different story. All you got to do, all I have to do sometimes is go to social media. Because it says the whole world is connected. And seeing kids that I hang out in the neighborhood with, kids that I played ball with when I was a kid, I'm thinking, wow, if God's grace was not on my life, maybe my life would have looked like my family would have looked like my finances would have looked like the kind of man that I am it's like, but thank God for his grace sometimes even when I didn't know his voice he protected me I can look back through my life and think wow and there are times I didn't even know him but his hand was still on my life and he still protected me even when I did not know him he is such a good father I love that song Karen he's so wonderful he's a good father he says, I want you to understand all these cool things and to enjoy all that, but I want you to get things into perspective. I want you to get things in, in the right order. And he says, I want you to get your priorities right. The most important thing in the pecking order is that you want to know and you know that your name is written there. Yes, yes. You want to know that... They won't be like, well, could you spell your name M W? It's like M what? M no. <laughs> I don't think you're here. No, you wanna know that your name is there. Then you can rejoice, and then all these things come, because why are those miracles? It's that like God is empowering us to be a part of His kingdom. See, when you went on the cross and he died on that tree, and when he declared those words, it is finished, he, he literally opened up the heavens for us. Because they are, they, they, that if, you, if you don't realize this, that there are kingdoms that are operating in the world today. And they are in constant competition for yours and my devotion. There's the kingdom of man, the kingdom of Darkness, the kingdom of hell, and the kingdom of God. We had no access to the kingdom of God prior to the cross. So we were subjected to live under the kingdom of man, which is driven by um, talent and uh, whoever's the strongest is going to rule us. And it's so crazy, and sometimes we don't even think about it, and how much subject we are to man's authority. We don't have as much freedom as we think we do, even in the United States, the land of the free and the home of the brave, right? Because sometimes you try to do something that's outside of conventional kingdom man parameters, you'll realize that, no, I don't rule this kingdom. It's got its owners, and they get to determine what's right. Then you have the kingdom of darkness that messes with our minds and with our hearts and with our, it's just the kingdom that wants, it deals, competes for the inside. But the damage is manifested on the outside. So we are dealing with this thing, this power that has absolutely been around longer than any one of us. And you see families going through chains and cycles of addiction, characteristics that are horrible. And you're like, man, I, I, all I wanted to do when I grew up was not to be like my father. And when I grew up, I became exactly like my father. You see, our family cycles, our problems that, that, that are just perpetual, that go on into one family. You can see it coming, but you can't do anything about it. Man, that reminds me so much of his dad. Then you say, oh man, there's an uncle I never met, and we have the same kind of temper. And so we, if we are subjected to the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of this world, then it becomes just a frustrating thing, and we start accepting this thing as if as though that's what our destiny ought to be. And so we think, well, I'm always going to live with this anger. I'm always never going to be successful because we only go this far as a family. Our family is all messed up. How many have had a family? Don't raise it, but we know. 
I'm not going to go there. I think, well, that's just the way it is. And Jesus comes and he tears down every power of the enemy. He says, L- listen, listen to this verse. Let me reread again. Verse 18. Yes, Jesus told them, I saw Satan fall down from heaven like a lightning, and I have given you authority to trample over snakes and scorpions and to overcome every power of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. Sometimes you'll get hurt, but you won't be harmed. Sometimes you might be injured, but you won't be harmed. You won't be utterly destroyed. See, the kingdom of darkness, Jesus helps us. So he talks kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. He says, let me give you a picture of the kingdom of darkness. He has one thing. The Bible says the enemy, John 10, 10, if you're writing notes. says the enemy has one mission. He says he comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it in full. Have it more abundantly. Have the complete life that you are designed uh, to have. Now let me tell you this. You might have come from a messed up situation. No one in your family could have even gotten to where you are now. Your past does define who you are right now. But it doesn't have to define your future if you're in Christ. Because now you're introduced to another kingdom that you can be a part of. And nothing. He says, now I've given you authority. You can look at all the family trees and say, man, it doesn't look good. The prospect doesn't look good. But this is where it starts because I have been empowered by the kingdom that I now belong to, which is the kingdom of God, which is more powerful than any other kingdom. Not more powerful than the kingdom of man, more powerful than the kingdom of hell. He says that no weapon fashioned against you is going to be able to prosper. And every time that rises up in judgment, you can condemn because you have authority. You've been empowered as a child, as a child of the kingdom of God. When he said he's finished, he gave us access to God's kingdom. So we still operate in this. Now we are, we are graduated from operating into this dual um, uh, experience of the man's kingdom and the devil's kingdom wrecking heavy cover us, frustrating our lives, attacking our every being, and getting us to just settle. It's like, yeah, my, it's never going to be happy at my house. My marriage is going to just always be like this, you know. We'll just have to suffer and just, just the way it is. No, it's not. He's a healer. He's a restorer. He's a redeemer. He, he, he causes things that are not and makes possibilities out of nothing. That's right. I'm a... But now, when we open our lives to the kingdom of God, we now have access of connection. Not from our, like outside us, but God is inviting us to be inside us. Yes. Inside us talk differently than people that observe from the outside. Inside us, you don't know, they already know. So Jesus tells this story. You know this, the story of the prodigal son. And there's a Katu brothers, uh, real quick. One gets just so crazy. Decides, I don't want anything to do with this family. I'm tired of being told what to do. I want to stay out till 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like, man, if you're going to stay in this house, if I'm going to pay your insurance, if I'm going to... 10 o'clock is the time. 10.01, I show up. Dad's waiting. Or mom's waiting. Come on. We say 10 o'clock. What were you doing? Where were... I'm tired of this stuff. Nobody in this family really cares about me. I, I'm out, Dad. Just give me. I know you got, you've been building up this 529 plan with some tax benefits on it. I know you've been putting out some, some money on the college savings plan for me. You know, just give me my stuff. I'm going to get out of here. I, I, I got a driver's license. I know how to. I'm out of here. Dad says, man, son, you're not getting it. I'm looking out for, you, for your best interest here. I, I don't want people to hurt you. I know I was a teenager. I didn't, I, I didn't show up in this planet as a dad or as a mom. I was a kid just like you. And you know those things that you're saying? I invented those excuses. <laughs> I was part of the organizing committee of some of the, I, I know this stuff really well. Kids says, no, dad, just let me go. I, 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 dad says, okay. 
Son here, here's your access code. You know, I'll change the, the account to your name. You know, kid goes home, right? Decides to go, have a, live a, have a great life. Another kid's there. He wasn't home at 10 o'clock. Kid was there at 7. Dad, you said 8, 10? I'll be there three hours early. One kid goes on, life gets good for a while, and then things start getting rough. Just when you think you hit rock bottom, you find, discover that there is new levels of negative. You're in the red, but the numbers keep working. It gets to a point that the kid says, Lord, I just can't live my life like this anymore. I, I'm better off going back and being a slave of my father than living the life I'm living. I'll do whatever it takes. And in the story, the son comes back, and he's just begging for mercy. God, Dad, just please, just let me come. I, I'll, I'll do all the windows. I'll wash the windows. I'll mow the lawn. I'll, I'll do even the trimming on it, if you'd like. For no pay, just let me have a place to sleep. Expecting the worst, the father says, boy, the father cries. Cries, hugs him, crowns him. He says, son, that from the day you left the house, I haven't had a good sleep ever. My eyes are always looking down the street, wondering when you're going to go back. When are you going to come back home? It's been my life. It's been my prayer. I've been waiting for you all this time. Because you, my son, you are dead. I didn't, you know, they didn't have cell phones back then. So you can keep up with text and know somewhat who his friends were. But now, you are lost and you are found now. You are dead and you're now back to life. Hacked him, clothed him, cleaned him up, put up a good party for him. She says, welcome home. And you would think the brother would be happy. But he got upset. He says, Dad, all I've ever done in this house is to obey everything you ever wanted. I even went farther. And not a single day in my life have you ever thrown me a party like that you all say you give me money for McDonald's or something (laughs) but not a party like that with my friends I could have a good time and the dad says you missed the point everything I have is yours always been yours you missed the point of the kingdom God the Father, when he sent his son, he died on the cross for our sin. Jesus declared it is finished and gave us access to this kingdom. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, those who received him, to them he gave them rights to become children. Not just people, children of God. See, everyone in this planet, how good, bad, ugly, whatever, they are God's people. Even the guys that bombed the churches last week, they're God's people. But Jesus gives us the access to not be just called people of God, but we can become children of God. He gives us an invitation to be inside us. And he gives us an empowerment, if you would, the authority to access the kingdom so that as we are walking this life, dealing with the kingdom of man issues, go Monday morning to work, the guy that runs by your office every week and says something nasty, or whatever, the boss maybe that you like or do not like, or the employees that drives you crazy, or the student, the kingdom of man. He's giving us access to the kingdom of God so that the kingdom of man will not ruin our lives.
people will not have the ability to mess with your day to where you've lost, lost your fun, you've lost your joy, you've lost your peace because someone else is having a hard day. Now mine has to be ruined. He's like, no, it doesn't have to be ruined. You tap into the kingdom and say, hey, I'll take a step back. I'll let them deal with what they're going to do. My life is much better than getting in a fight that doesn't mean anything. Right. Access to the kingdom. Man, I've been having a hard time. I'm looking for, for, for work. And maybe I need to sell my house. I was like, well, is it the right time to sell it? We have access to the kingdom. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I might not have the answers. I'm still operating in the kingdom of man. But I have access to the kingdom. God, would you open the windows of heaven as you said in your word. Uh, uh, do something on behalf of my family. You get hit by a sickness. Like, no, I'm going to do all I can. But I'm still going to look up and say, God, do something that no man can do. Guide the people that can access to the kingdom. So he's allowing us to navigate this world with access. And it gives us the authority to recognize that in the middle of all the things, sometimes Satan takes advantage, not sometimes, all the time, he takes advantage of weaknesses because he's, he's a thief. Thief, they, they, they scan around. I used to work in the banking industry for years, and I, and I remember one of the things bank robberies always had. They said, always had, and this is a long time when they robbed a different way than they do now. I guess I don't know if they, how they do it now. <laughs> But the FBI had done a lot. So the start is like it was always the same. They robbed at a certain time. They, they, it wasn't a guy that just showed up with an old Western movie with a gun. No, they started the patterns of how the employees, when time they come in, who opens. It happens at a certain time of the day. It's always in the morning. And, and so, why? Because they are looking for the weak spot before they take their action. Satan does the same way. He doesn't attack you in the place where you're the strongest. He looks for the weakness. He looks for the weak areas. He goes, well, he has, he's prone to this. Or his family's always struggle with this area, so I'm going to put that in front of his life so he can fail and feel bad about himself. I keep trying this so hard, but I keep failing. So what you do, you withdraw and just accept, accept it as it is. And God says, no, I have given you authority to trample over snakes and scorpions and to overcome every power of the enemy. Just because that's the way it is, it doesn't mean that that's the way it needs to be. It stops right here, Satan. I refuse, I exercise the authority that I have in Jesus' name. We are empowered by Jesus. So we have the access. So we can operate, have authority over the kingdom of darkness, and we can navigate through the kingdom of man with peace, with joy, abundant life. You don't have to have the things that are going on around you affect what's going on inside of you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Did you get one or two things from the word this morning? Amen. Stand with me this morning. We're going to pray. Amen. Before we pray, I wanted to write, read you a letter I received from a guy, actually a couple, that had this going on in their lives. And, and they wanted me to share. It's a couple that came here a couple of years ago, and they had to move out of town for a job. But God had really restored their lives, and they wanted to share with you and just wanted to encourage somebody. And uh, uh, it's Steve and Laurie. This is uh, Dear Pastor Solo. This is Steve and Laurie writing you your testimony. In the fall of 2015, I ran into Sue Hill. Sue Hill is the lady in green whom I had known from previous church. I told her I was looking for a little bit more. She directed me to a friend, uh, a mentor, and they led me to Lincoln City Church. December of 2015, I came, and Pastor Jerry was prayed over me, and the, uh, over my marriage. And uh, we had been separated for two and a half years. I had seriously never gone forth to prayer. I'd never gone out for prayer in my life. But through the teach, your teaching and the Holy Spirit working in you as a pastor in this church and in the, all the people that I met, I knew that God, uh, God, uh, God knew that this is what I needed. So our four nearly all grown up kids had even encouraged me to move on with my life, gave me their approval for divorce and said, Mom, you know, you need to just get over it. And I'd never had... I never had it in my heart for 30 plus years of marriage. I knew my husband's behavior was not who he was. 
From the very pits of hell, Satan had stolen his heart, mind, body, and soul. But I knew our almighty God was so much bigger than this. I knew divorce was not God's plan for my life and my kids. It doesn't matter the age that this was not going to be their legacy. This is not the legacy I wanted for them. February 2016, Steve came back home, literally had a come to Jesus meeting. He was unemployed for that whole year. We lived on jobs and sa- on, on jobs that I had and savings. And we worshiped together at City Church. The best thing that ever happened to us. Then God blessed us with a fabulous job. Steve, at 62, had a chance to start over. And in a new region. Not always easy, but totally worth it. Glory to God. It was in him, it, it was all in him and still is. We could never have masterminded any of this. We are closer than ever to our kids and enjoying the babies together. All this to say, we will always consider City Church our home. Feel free to use this because it might encourage someone else not to quit. We love you all. We love our City Church family. And that's the kingdom of God restoring what the kingdom of hell wanted to to make a legacy. But God says, no, 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 not this time. You might have done this, but God is a restorer.